Where do you come from, Muhammad? From Allah, which he thinks is heaven. Jesus comes here and he tells us he also comes from God. Now we have a problem. But who believe him? Just as you would believe in something else and then you need salvation from somebody. And if we are going to reach them by insulting Muhammad, it doesn't work. But truth ought to be spoken. What does the prophet want in his life? Above everything, including Allah. Says number one, food. Number two, women. I have no problem. Maybe that's the morality of where he comes from. Do you know why they called it? They called him merciful? Simple. Because he would kill the husbands of these women and then be merciful and marry them. Now hear this. Buddha never told anyone there is a God. So origin failed. Do Christians worship the same God as every other religion presents? I have come across a number of Christians who actually believe we all worship the same God. We serve the same God and so they find it a problem when Christians are evangelizing to win souls. They find it a big problem. Interestingly, many people do not know that the God of the Bible is absolutely different from the God of the Quran, the God in Hinduism, and the God in any other religion you would ever come across. Now, there seem to be some level of similarities between Christianity and Islam, and that is because the Quran affirms so many things that the Bible talks about, except when it goes against it. And then you hear Muslims mention the Bible is corrupt, and that is because that side the bible disagrees right but jesus is in the quran and so now the big question is is jesus in the bible the same jesus in the quran and the answer is a big no there is this video i came across on the internet by a pastor by name ubert that i would like us to watch concerning religion and what each religion believes in and then i'll come back with my final um, thought where do you come from, Muhammad? From Allah, which he thinks is heaven. Jesus comes here and he tells us he also comes from God. Now we have a problem. They claim to come from the same place. Go there, you, you, you go there because Muhammad cannot be close. What is that? Are you getting this now? This one is 560 years younger than Jesus. Maybe you didn't know Islam is 560 years younger than Christianity. The problem with this particular dating is the fact that people will sear their conscience so much as Paul would put it and believe in a document that is over 700 years, not even a document because the Quran came 200 years after Muhammad, but believe in a man who came 700 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus, right? Meanwhile, there were people who lived in the first century who recorded the death and resurrection of Jesus. And that is pure historical fact, not an angel narrating a story as to what happened. These are people who saw what happened and decided we can't watch this go unrecorded and so they decided to record. You could read in Roman history and you would find a lot of Roman historians also pondering over this and giving their, their narratives concerning the death and resurrection of Jesus and how the people of that day worshipped Jesus as God. But then the problem here is how people would deny everything that seems like truth and follow what they seem not to be able to let go because they were born into it that is where the problem is they were born into it and so they see it as a part of them and so no matter how truthful or that document seem they wouldn't want to get into it or no matter how deceptive they come to realize their document is they still want to stick by it and it's very sad that is why i tell people in order for you to deliver people out of darkness it takes prayer not 
all the theology and then all that we, have, we know people who are very very theologically inclined but they are unable to deliver anybody from the darkness um, um, of the world and so let's let's be beware of these things and let's all make sure that we identify truth and if we identify truth we go by it and not be biased simply because it doesn't favor us yes it came 500 years plus after christianity had been established now we have jesus here i come from heaven origin is established that's a worldview muhammad from allah heaven origin is established number two purpose he says i'm the prophet of allah no problem with you muhammad jesus said i am the son of god there is this argument most muslims not most all muslims tend to lift up any time the question of the person of jesus is brought up and that is jesus christ being god according to the bible and every muslim will tell you jesus never stated emphatically that he was god and no matter how good you read it to them they would still deny it because muhammad stated jesus as a good prophet from god and so if jesus claimed to be god and not a prophet or a better prophet then that would actually debunk the claim of muhammad thus making him a false prophet and muslims don't want that and so they claim jesus never called himself god but i have two verses here that i would like to explain to clarify certain things here john 4 25 and i read the woman said now in order for you to understand what exactly is going on better context you'd have to start from the beginning and this was a meeting between jesus christ and a samaritan woman right and the samaritans or the gentiles were also laying in wait for the Messiah because the belief system of the day according to the jews was that the Messiah was going to come and deliver them from their sorrows which most samaritans also adhered to so most of them were also in wait for the Messiah. verse 26 then jesus told her i am the Messiah. i am the Messiah." in other words i am god the savior of the world the savior which the jews had preached for a very long time i am he who has come now for better clarity i would like us to continue from mark 14 61 and i read but jesus was silent and made no reply then the high priest asked him are you the messiah the son of the blessed one now this particular quote is taken from daniel 7 13 where most of the jews looked to in wait of the Messiah and so the Messiah was going to come down as prophesied by Daniel 7 13 and that is exactly what the high priest is quoting to Jesus and should Jesus agree to it that is blasphemy and from that time onwards he would be subjected to one who is deserving of death now listen to what Jesus says here verse 62 Jesus said I am now this particular I am Jesus has quoted several times and it's in reference to Exodus 3 14 where Moses met I am and so Jesus said I am and you will see the son of man seated in the place of power at the right hand and coming in the clouds of heaven and this was also a direct quote from Daniel 7 13 which affirmed the deity of jesus christ i tell people in order for you to ascertain truth within truth lines culture of the day tradition what and how people spoke in ancient times in reference to biblical scriptures you would have to go back and study prolegomena because it's not for everybody right let's continue so their purpose is defined now we want to prove morality morality how did he live? Never got married. He said, I'm married to Jerusalem. Listen, we have not a high priest who cannot be what? Touched by the number of our infirmities. For he was tested in every corner, yet without sin. Never committed a sin. Muhammad married a six-year-old. 
slept with her at nine years old. The interesting thing with Muslims is any defect with morality in text that you pull from the Quran, they wouldn't defend it, but rather, or not necessarily defend, but give you a better explanation to that. Maybe we are reading wrongly, right? So we need better explanation, but they wouldn't do that. What they do is rather jump into the Bible and pick passages that they have broken down to seem like what the Prophet Muhammad did. And so you hear or find a lot of Muslims bringing up the story of Rebecca anytime you quote Muhammad getting into a nine year old child. They go back and tell you Rebecca was also six years old and all that rubbish. Meanwhile, they have never read the text before and do not know that Rebecca was a grown woman, right? It's sad how they defend themselves, but... Married 11 women. The last woman, one of the young ones we called Aisha, was asked to what does the prophet want in his life? Above everything, including Allah. Says number one, food. Number two, women. I have no problem. Maybe that's the morality of where he comes from. So he has established he comes from where? From God heaven. His purpose is a prophet. Now he has a problem here on morality. We have to look at the morals. He was a, he was a, an army general, a mercenary. He killed people. And you know why they called it, they called him merciful? Simple. Because he would kill the husbands of these women and then be merciful and marry them now i'm not sure if muslims would agree to that but that isn't my point my point has to do with morality as he spoke before muslims claim muhammad is the best person that ever lived in this world but if you place the life of muhammad and the life of the jesus in the quran side by side you come to realize it is not so the life of the Jesus lived in the Quran was a pure life. In other words, a sinless life. As the Bible states it, Jesus never sinned. The Quran states that an angel visited Mary and in the last part says that you would give birth to a pure boy. Well, we can't say that man sinless, but if we are to go by the life that Jesus lived and compare it to the life that Muhammad lived, you know there is a huge difference here. But it's sad how Muslims claim Muhammad was far better in terms of morality and deeds than Jesus Christ. Although the Quran and the Hadith points out the immorality lifestyle of Muhammad, thus making Jesus Christ a clean person. I wonder the category or the criteria they used in judging Muhammad as a purely upright man. It's sad. Oh, no lie here. I've told you not to insult these people, but just stick to the truth. You, 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 you should not say, Muhammad is nonsensical, stupid. No. There are people who believe him. Just as you would believe in something else and then you need salvation from somebody. And if we are going to reach them by insulting Muhammad, it doesn't work. But truth ought to be spoken. No, it fails on morality. What about destiny? Let's get to destiny. Here is what Muhammad said. When I die, is that all? He asked the question. But my Bible doesn't start anything. It doesn't finish. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Oh, no, no, you didn't get it. He asked the question. Never answered the question. Jesus answered the question of destiny. He the concept of born again in Christianity is one who is moved from his worldly state into a Christ state. In other words, being moved from this world to be seated with God. And so every Christian is sure of his ticket to heaven after he passes on from this life. It is not so with other religion. And I've had the opportunity to dialogue with a couple of Muslims and you ask them if they would go to heaven and they are not sure. One Muslim lady told me, it all depends on Allah. If it is the will of Allah that she goes to heaven, she would go. If it is not Allah's will, 
then she would go to hell, which is very sad because the good news which came prior to what the recitation is quoting on judgment and how God or Allah is going to judge the world are completely different. But by grace are we saved, not of works, lest any man should boast, whereby in the recitation or the Quran, it is by works you are justified with the Creator. And even with your works, if the Creator isn't happy with you, you will still end up in hell. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is the perfect opportunity or time for us to go into the world and make good disciples. And let's quit this discipleship of bringing people that are close to us into Christ who already know Christ. There are so many Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, Shintos, Confucianists, and so many people, atheists, out there who do not know Christ. And it is our job to go out there and then bring them into Christ. So they also get that opportunity to enjoy all the good that we enjoy as a result of we being moved from this mess world into Christ. So Muhammad passes when it comes to origin, passes when it comes to purpose, fails when it comes to morality, fails when it comes to destiny. He doesn't know where he's going. He's asking a question, when I die, is that all? Now we're looking for logical consistency. What you said and what is happening on the ground, does it work? Geographically, the Quran doesn't work. As much as you have what is called the, the Acts of the Apostles, the Quran is something called... <laughs> It's called the Hadith. These are the writings of the followers or rather the leaders or the apostles of the Prophet Muhammad. They wrote a lot of books. And in there, that's where you find talking of, talk of killing people. Do you know what the morality again? It says hide for the Christian, the, the Jews, wherever you find them, ambush them and kill them. Morality is being failed. The moment you put murder, you failed on morals. You find a lot of Muslims actually defending that particular text by hiding the bushes and wherever you find the Jews and Christians, kill them. And these are texts that are found within the Quran, which are still used up to today. You find most Muslims who might not obey that or go with that because they see themselves to be good Muslims. But when it comes to text or authority, what we call authority the individual has less play or say in it what the book says is what we see as final right like what you read in science textbooks no matter the kind of ideology or the kind of life you want to live it doesn't change what the text says and if you don't obey what you read in that science textbook you would fail now this is the case where the text or or the scripture says wherever you find the Jews and Christians, kill them. This defeats the kind of life you live. You can choose to be the best person in this world. But if certain people can actually take that and still work with that, I think that is where the problem lies. So a couple of Muslims will say, well, that was old in their days and try to explain and justify what Muhammad said that oh no they were at war with the christians and muslims and so it applies to only that time well there is no text anywhere else that says it was only that time and so now it is over so wherever you find the christians be friends with them it never says that it actually says hate them because they are not a part of you in some parts of the quran hate the christians and jews the unbelievers because they do not believe in what you believe in that is why today you find a lot of muslims who do not want to associate themselves with christians because although they can't kill at least they can hate or wouldn't want to when i see muslims being too friendly with christians i just tell them they do not know what is written in the quran because the quran doesn't instruct you do that we are infidels unbelievers and allah is certain to kill us anywhere he finds us 
right and so you being friends with us actually exposes your ignorance in the text that you claim to uh, have as your authority what about buddha son be buddha please send me now hear this buddha never told anyone there is a god so origin failed Purpose, he said, I'm seeking to be enlightened. Jesus said, I am the light. So he is crying for that light. We are believing reality, sir. No, we believe reality. Hey, this Jesus is real. Jesus is God and he is coming back again to judge the world separate the goods from the sheep if you are hearing me today and for some reason you are confused as to what religion to join and what not i spoke to one lady just yesterday who simply claims she worships god she is not interested in joining any form of religion and so i had to preach to her the good news and dissect various forms of religion and what they believe in to them and she that has decided not to partake in any of them her stance after death and she told me she was going to get back to me so i'm praying that she comes back with a positive response because i know the holy spirit moved on her the death and resurrection of jesus christ is what made him god and trustworthy because he prophesied concerning his death countless number of times now that same death and resurrection is what gives us the assurance that one day we would also resurrect or he will resurrect us when we also die the interesting thing is the quran actually denies the death and resurrection of christ they claim jesus was swapped on the cross with another person if you are listening to me and for some reason you are confused as to what religion to join maybe you do not join any religion i tell you the evidence is clear that christianity not necessarily Christianity, but Jesus is the way, truth, and life. If you look around and see what is going on, you could actually come to that conclusion that there is something powerful concerning uh, Jesus Christ. And if you would have to study more into it, I would beg you to do that. And with all sincerity and humility, Jesus would show himself to you. If you love this video, kindly don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Until my next video, Peace out.